Welcome back everybody to another Motobob video here at Eichma and we're over on the Honda stand to take a look at this, the Fireblade SP. Now it might not look externally particularly different, but there are lots of changes to this bike for 2024 to try and make it more competitive. So here we go with the 11 key things that you need to know about it. Now firstly, this engine is largely the same. And if you look at those top line performance figures, so 214.5 horsepower and 113 newton meters of peak torque, it might not sound like a great deal has changed, but they list quite a lot of tweaks to the internals. So a higher compression ratio, new intake ports, new valve timing and valve springs, a lighter crankshaft and lighter titanium con rods, as well as a new two motor ride by wire throttle system. And they say that the aim of this is to boost the low end torquiness and the mid range and the spread of power, whilst at the same time preserving that impressive top end peak. So it should be a more versatile engine. In fact, it really does seem like they're trying to boost acceleration rather than top end speed, because not only have we got shorter gears in the gearbox, but also shorter ratios on the final drive here as well. And so naturally that's gonna lead to snappier acceleration at the sacrifice of a little bit of top end flat out speed. Now, one of the other things that they're offering for 2024 is this beautiful, stealthy looking carbon edition. We've got carbon on the tank here, carbon on the winglets and down on the fairing. I'm sure there's a little bit elsewhere as well. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Only 300 of these though are being made. So if you want to get one, you've probably got to ax pretty quickly. But across all the bikes, there's been a little bit of a tweak to the electronics as well. So whilst you've still got three standard riding modes that affect pretty much the same rider rates, so different levels of power, different levels of engine braking, traction control and wheelie control. That traction control setting, which has nine different levels, has been updated to suit the new output characteristics of the engine and accommodate a little bit more grunt in the low to mid range. That's the key change really, but you've still got keyless, which is a nice feature. Four levels of launch control, all managed through this great little TFT dash tucked in the cockpit there. I think it looks really good. A nice, simple, almost analog-esque rev counter that makes it easy to read at a glance. And so yeah, an electronics package, which I think you would say is pretty much complete. Now look, looking at the frame, again, you might not think that a great deal has changed, but it's all about these little tweaks on this new 24 Fireblade. And so on the chassis front, they've tuned the rigidity for, they say, sharper handling and also better grip. That means reducing rigidity in the frame. So they're saying 17% less lateral stiffness and also 15% less torsional stiffness. And while they're at it, they've managed to shave off 960 grams from the frame and a further 140 grams from the shorter engine Hanger bolts. 140 grams off some bolts. That's quite impressive. And then that had me thinking, well, have they gone on some weight saving program? I mean, that's pretty much a kilogram combined, maybe a little bit more, but it looks like to me, we're looking at 201 kilograms wet still. And so perhaps there've been some little weight gains elsewhere, stuff like emissions regulations often means more in the catalyzer, for example, and it's offset those savings to mean you've got pretty much the same total curb weight. Now, suspension on this bike is absolutely top of the line. We've got Olin's, a 43 millimeter NPX, upside down fork and it's got Olin smart electronic control system so it's semi-active and adjustable through the switch gear and dash. At the rear we've got a TTX 36 shock which is also controlled by that system and while the hardware hasn't particularly changed if you're editing the settings through the dash you'll notice there are different settings available which they say have been refined and also there's a more visual preload guide to make it easier to understand and easier to adjust. As for the braking, well, it's got a new brake caliper on it. This is the Brembo Stylema R. We're used to seeing the Stylema as a very high spec brake on a lot of sporty naked and sports bikes. But this particular R model is really reserved for like proper top end stuff like this. How much it's really noticeable to your average rider, I'm not particularly sure, but you can distinguish them visually by the little extra red lines next to the Brembo logo. So at least everyone knows you're on Stylema Rs. Tied into the braking system, of course, you've got cornering ABS, and there are some new settings now. So you've got standard, track and race. And I believe it's that race mode that switches off the corner in sensitivity and intervention. So really they're deeming that as a road specific feature. And also it switches off ABS at the rear, which is gonna make it feel a little bit more slidey aroundy and probably preferable to more advanced track focused riders. Now, before we get onto the next feature, I just wanna say a massive thanks to our sponsors for this week, Insta360 and Metzler Tires. In our experience of riding, 
plenty of bikes over the past few years. Metzler tires are excellent. We've tried absolutely loads from the Sportex, which are very grippy and perfect for a sunny day blast in good conditions. Or there's the Rotex, which are a little bit more of an all-rounder, sports touring, also fantastic. Plus, you've got all their products on the adventure side. The Torrance, which is a an adventure touring tire with a road bias. The Caro Street, which is a little bit more dirt biased. And if you really do want to go off-road and test the capabilities of your bike, then the Caro 4s are much more knobbly and have better mud clearance. Genuinely, every time we've had a bike with Metzlers, I've been very impressed with them. So do check out the link down in the description to see their full lineup and maybe pick up some new tires for the next riding season for your bike. There's nothing like a fresh set of tires that can transform the handling of your bike. So massive thanks to Metzler Tires for their support. And with that, back to the bike. Genuinely, it feels like they've changed almost every element of this bike in some really small ways. So that's why I'm saying it's all about these little refinements. I mean, take the bodywork, for example. We've got a new winglet design. The idea of these is to create downforce so you've got a planted front end that's less prone to wheelie in and it gives it stability. But now they're saying this new shape makes high speed turns easier by about 10%. On top of that, we've got a new mudguard design with this convex surface they're calling it. And the idea of that is the way it affects the air around the wheel makes it easier to actually turn the wheel in the wind and again at the bottom of the fairing it extends a lot further back closer to the rear wheel and they say in dry conditions it gives a little bit more feel but also in the wet it keeps some of the spray and rain off the rear wheel which is naturally going to improve grip in those challenging conditions now you would expect a fire blade sp to be quite a focused sporty machine so we're not expecting a Goldwing style riding position and levels of comfort here, but they have for 2024 just chilled it out a little bit, maybe to make it a bit more amenable for riding on the road. The seat height is 830 mil, which I think is the same as the previous gen, and it's quite moderate, you know, that's pretty reasonable. But what they've done is pivoted the rider back a little bit, so I believe the foot pegs are 16 mil lower, so that's gonna naturally push you a bit back like that and then the bars are moved 90 mil up and 23 millimeters closer to the rider does it look comfortable well it is still pretty sporty it's got a certain job to do but i think you know 16 mil down and then 20 mil up and back is quite a big margin and probably pay off if you're doing longer stints in the saddle on the road on this bike also on the ergonomics front there's a new shape to the fuel tank which i think is meant to be a little bit better for gripping onto with your knees again if you're riding on track and riding aggressively then that's absolutely essential so that'll be a appreciated and while they were at it they added another 0.4 liters of fuel capacity so it's now up to 16.5 which again small increment but all these little tweaks probably add up to what is all round a better bike now we talked a little bit about the dash earlier but one change i haven't mentioned is that now the red line changes depending on how long the bike has been running so i think it comes down to 8,000 rpm whilst the bike is warming up and then once it reaches you know a reasonable operating temperature it goes up to the regular full red line of 14,000 rpm nanny state or a useful feature let me know what you think down in the comments. No price on this one as of yet, but I think the previous 22 model was just shy of 20 grand. So this isn't gonna be one that you'll be able to pay for out of your pocket money. I'd expect a little bit up on that. And also the carbon version. Carbon ain't cheap either. So that's probably gonna be what? 22, 23, 24? Leave me your guesses down in the comments below. And also let me know what you think of it. Is this enough for the Fireblade for this update or should they have gone further? Do leave a comment. We always enjoy reading them. Also, we put a playlist on the screen here with all of the bikes from Eichma this year. Loads of bikes coming, so you know, do check it out and try and keep up to date with it. If you're not subscribed, then do hit subscribe and you'll see all the videos as soon as they go live. Many thanks for watching this one and we'll see you in the next video.